kitchens. It's Friday and kitchens closed. Today and kitchens closed. We are actually leaving Szczecin. Yay! Oh, 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 crazy talk. <laughs> All right, so we're both feeling much better. Uh, we're on the move. We're out and about, new bit, new. The Canadian version of we're going somewhere is we're out and about and do do to boot it. So we're out and about, and we are going to Sardinia. Sardinia. Okay, so Sardinia is a very important city uh, in the historical sense for Poland. There was a big old battle. There's been some battles there. I think there's been first recorded battle for the country of Poland was in 900. And something, and something. Some, something. Not 1900. Yeah, nine. Nine. A lot of history there. Yeah. And then there was some, some World War II battles there. We're going to uh, try to find some history today. We're going to find some history today. So we've pretty much, we think, exhausted all of the... Normally how we do the, the, the kitchen's clothes is me and Anna sit around, we figure out what we want to eat, and then we figure out where to take you guys in order to eat that food and describe take it out. to you. Take out. <laughs> eat the take out. Yeah, eat the take out. But we've pretty much, I think, exhausted all the easily take outables. Um... So we're going to focus more on the stuff we can find for you guys to show you. And then I'm going to eat something because I have to all the time. Right. Uh, and it might be just another hot dog or a kebab or, or a sandwich from a roadside, maybe whatever. There's a, maybe there's a food truck somewhere. Well, if we could find a food truck, that'd be awesome sauce. So we are still going to show you guys some food trucks around Szczecin and stuff. But we, just, we, we, we haven't left the city of Szczecin in months. So it's yeah. time to go leave and go do something else kitchen's been kitchen's closed it's been closed for a while yeah kitchen's <laughs> closed has been closed so here we go so come along to Sardinia. Sardinia. for? I have to check the map. Why? Because we don't want to go to Germany. But didn't I say that we weren't going to Germany? But you don't know how to read a map. <laughs> and you don't trust the Google machine? No, I do trust the Google machine. And you don't trust the GPS and you don't trust your, I... your husband. <laughs> that gentleman is how you do it. <laughs> but you can't gloat when you're right, guys, because then we're wrong too many times. <laughs> <laughs> to be gloating when we're right. But this time I was right. <gasps> Ooh, what else happened the other day? We were playing Monopoly, what happened? And I lost. Yes! I literally... For the first time! <laughs> I literally have never won Monopoly playing with her. Because her brain is so big. And she knows how to do it so well. But this time, Lady Luck was on my side. It's snowing. What do you call it when it's snowing and it's spring? It's false spring. False spring. It's like fake news but different. <laughs> false spring. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a tight deal. Like go home winter, you're drunk. Goodness gracious. You don't want you anymore. You're not welcome. It was it was proper snowing um, yesterday. We had probably a quarter inch of snow on the ground yesterday. Absolutely ridiculous. I don't want it anymore. I don't need a baby. We stopping? So you know when you, if you have kids, you know, when you leave and you have to ask them before you leave the house, have you gone to the bathroom? Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? <laughs> and then they say yes, and then you get on the road and five minutes later, you're like, mom, I'm hungry. <laughs> so who, who are you saying in this scenario is the child who's hungry? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> but what are you getting here too? I'm going to get some coffee. What else? Nothing. Nothing? No sweet bun? No. Okay, we'll see. <laughs>
All right, so. Gas station food. You, you, you got your, where's your um, coffee? I didn't get a coffee. Oh. Did you get a sweet bun? No. What'd you get? Got a hot dog. Hot dog. Now, this is the hot dog we got at the gas station. It's pretty good. Pretty, it's got jalapenos good. and <laughs> sunflower seeds. And Some kind of sprinkles. Oh, and then it's got lettuce on the inside. No, that's not lettuce, is it? No, it's onion. Rucola. Oh, rucola. And I got a big old hot dog thing. But we have to share. Hmm? We have to share. Okay. Because I wanted one of those two. Ow! But the guy oh, had already started cooking the bun. And he gave a stink eye about cooking the bun. Mm. And then not being like... Because they're different lengths of hot dogs, so this would have gone to waste. Uh, so I got it anyway. Mm -hmm. But I really want that one. Oh, spicy. So, nothing special. You like this. Will I? Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it. It's got red bell pepper and red onion on it mm. as well. I want a bite. On that hot dog, we got sauce Amerikanski. He says that's the only spicy one. It is the spicy one, but I don't know why the American sauce is spicy. I mean, we're not known for our spiciness. We're known for our ketchup. No. Thank you. Mm. Good, eh? mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm happy with that. I didn't get a penny though. I need one more bite. <laughs> I didn't get a penny. I had a penny. I need one more bite. Okay. Oh, we got a whammy. A whammy zero. zero. Hmm. And if you don't know what a whammy zero is, go into our, all our videos and look up our beer tasting of zero percent alcohol beers. <clears throat> Whammy's one of them, eh? Mm-hmm. We'll be doing one with real alcohol, just not now. Not today. Not today. Mm -hmm. no. But there appears to be some kind of pepper in my hot dog. It looks pretty tasty too. The seeds are a little stale, but... Mm. It is a gas station though. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to finish up eating, then we'll be off. To the historicals. So here we are in Sardinia. And what happened in Sardinia is, is historically really important for Poland. This is the site of the first recorded battle that's written down that occurred here in Poland. Now, it happened on June 24th in 972, not 1972, but 972, between Polish dukes here and some uh, aristocraticals over here in the Deutschland. See, this is the Oder, Oder River, or Odra River, and Poland's on this side nowadays, and on the other side is Germany. Now, this has gone back and forth through the centuries, more times than people can count. As you can see from this, Poles are very proud of this battle and it's recorded history as almost Viking warriors taking place in a grand battle to protect historic Poland from the evil Germans across the, uh, the river here. So, that's a really important special thing. Now they've erected a wonderful statue up there that we're going to go and check out. And they've also recreated some wooden earthen defensive works that they believe to have happened right here. But first I want to turn it over to our good friend Igor Vipieski, who is a PhD doctor in history that teaches or taught at um, Wrocław University. Igor, what do you have to say? That's bullshit. Oh, well, let's walk up to the monument and we'll talk a little bit more about Igor's revelation. It's cold, man. Over here, it says the most west part, uh, or most west 
Pointy. Pointy tippity. Tip of Poland is three kilometers that way. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, that's what Oh, that's pretty westerly. Oh, look at that go. Okay, let's go check out the fort. Chronologically, historically, chronologically. Chris <laughs> Crystallogical. Historic, historically. Hysterically accurate. Hysterically. <laughs> chronological. <laughs> Don't laugh at my joke. <laughs> it is cold. Like, we just put out the video of the park when it was 70 degrees. And now it's cold degrees outside. Cold. And windy. And stupid. there appears to be a mosaic representing the battle that took place here in 19 and I keep saying 19 in 974 where the victorious Poles I imagine in white are slaying the Germans in black, in black. that is my guess at this interpretation Seems convenient. We're always victorious in all of the wars. Well, yeah. I know. <laughs> Here we have a recreation of wooden fortifications that would have been put together kind of sort of in this time period. ramparts with wooden poles with spikinesses put on top it's very basic but it will keep charging cavalry from coming at you uh, you can hide behind it for arrows and it's easy to put together quickly in a short amount of time with not a lot of people because we're surrounded by forests so you use what you have available to you let's come on inside so why why is it right in this location do you think the important thing about this is you have one, the high ground. Now I'm sure these fortifications are not built, recreated on exactly the site, the historical, cultural, sensitive site in which they believe this happened. Um, this is just a representation of what they think it looked like back in 972. But it was built here because everywhere around us is high ground. Here and here, everywhere there's high ground. So fighting uphill is much harder than fighting downhill so if you are defending you're going to want to defend on the high ground and then fight down against your enemies and sweep them into the river and the river is behind us that's another important barrier that's hard to get through problem that Igor was telling me about with this site. He's not, hit, he's not the only person that says this. Many historians have the opinion that did the battle take place? Absolutely it did. There are records of it, chronicles written talking about this battle in multiple places. The problem is, is in almost every historical fight that is ever recorded, one of the things that they like to record is the geography of the battle location. And in most of the chronicles that are believed to be accurate, no mention of the Oda River is ever in it. So that's like, that's like talking about Gettysburg without talking about uh, Little Round Top. That's like talking about crossing the Delaware and not talking about the Delaware. 
It's like talking about Normandy beach landing invasions without the beaches. You see what I'm saying? So to leave out the fact that this was done on the banks of the Oder River gives pause to many historians to think that this was actually fought someplace else. These fortifications are here because in the 1970s, the Soviet-led Polish government decided to try to secure Polish heritage in this region. Ancient Polish roots. They wanted to do this. The Germans did this too in Neuschwanstein. If you go down and look at King Ludwig's castle, he's got all kinds of things painted in there. Romantic scenes of knights and jousting and stuff that didn't take place in because Bavaria. This, because after the war, this was <clears throat> new well, Poland. Well, this, is, this right? is the next step. Right, exactly. So this was 972 that this battle took place. Between then in 1972, when the monument that we're going to go look at was erected, not resurrected, like I said, different, <laughs> erected, Poland had gone through battles with Swedes and Russians and Danes and all kinds of people, not too many with the Germans. But then 1939 happened, and the distance between 1939 and 1945 was so dramatically traumatic for the Polish people that it shaped the rest of their history for a good long time. Now the Soviet occupation came around and they wanted, the Polish government led by the communists, wanted to really show Polish heritage and roots and pride and this is Polish land. So you're gonna come here and you're gonna love it because this was where we come from. Well, so they, they, took, they, they dispatched archeologists to the area and they found remains of an encampment here. Was it the, the, the army of the Poles to fight? They don't know. There's nothing here that says a battle was done here. There's nothing they have found on the ground that said a battle was fought here. There's campfires. So they aligned what they wanted in history to align their present day 1972 facts that this is Poland, it's always been Poland, and Germans stay on that side of the border. Now we're gonna go look at this monument Last week we took you to Park Kasprowicza, where there are three uh, eagles statue. Let me know if you see any similarities. Hmm. Let's go. Escalator? Yeah, I would prefer walking. Yeah, the problem is, is that doesn't show up on, angles don't show up on cameras very well. People be like, you're not even walking up a steep hill. Hold on, stand there, beautiful. And that's what I'm saying, if I can see the, if you can see that, this is quite a hill. This is quite a hill. You got it, baby. Oh my God. Oh yes. We're almost there, baby. You got it. <laughs> it just gets steeper. Or is it just that down is nice? I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> it's not quite that bad, my love. I think the people who fought here would say differently. Now, I'm not saying, and neither is 
Dr. Igor that stuff didn't happen here, battles didn't happen, lives weren't lost here. They're just not sure it didn't happen in 972. All to this area at the end of World War II as the Russians and the Polish soldiers came across here and pushed the Germans back into Germany. Many, many men died here. Our next stop is gonna be over to a cemetery that shows us a fraction of the amount of lives lost in order to end that terrible conflict and for Poland to regain its borders as Poland. So let's go. Well, hi there, cutie pie. Have you enjoyed our walk so far? Yeah, no. <laughs> it's supposed to be April. Yeah, it is. But spring didn't spring. <clears throat> Did not. What do you hate most in this world? Cold. And? Wind. And what did you get today? Cold and wind. <laughs> My baby just loves to hear about history when it's cold and windy out. <laughs> Let's go look at some more history. <laughs> the memory of the victorious battle near Cedynia, where Mieszko I and his brother Tibor saved the Polish coastal territories against the German invasion of the Margrave Hodor troops. This monument was built in June 1972. Okay, so I want to clarify what I was talking about up there, just in case it came out gibberishy. 972 a battle of Sedina did happen. It's a historical fact. But there are other cities back then in the 10th century that were kind of named similarly to Sedina. There's different spellings. So the theory on a lot of historians are is that this could possibly not be the actual site of the battle. Since when they described the geography, no mention of the Oder River was there. But the Polish government under the Soviet Union was trying to establish ancient roots in this area that not the Germans, but this is Polish and always has been. So they erected a monument a thousand years after the battle dedicating to that battle the fact that Poles were victorious against the Germans. Even though throughout history, history, history of Poland, Germany has never been the main threat to Poland, historically speaking, through the thousands of years. It's been the Swedes, and the Russians, and the Lithuanians, and the Ukrainians, and countries and states that don't even exist anymore. So the thought behind it is, is they've matched history for their purposes of propaganda. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. But that's the theory, in a nutshell. So there you go. But now we're on our way. A little knowledge from our Uncle Marky. A little knowledge, a little something extra from Uncle Marky here. But now we're on our way to a cemetery to look at that. Guarding the entrance to the cemetery at Shikirki stands a mighty IS-2 Soviet heavy tank. This particular tank belonged to the Polish 4th Independent Heavy Tank Regiment, which fought here between 16 and 20 April 1945. The IS-2 tanks were mainly designed as breakthrough tanks firing a heavy high-explosive shell that was useful against entrenchments and bunkers. The IS-2 went into service in April 1944 and was used as a spearhead by the Red Army in the final stage of the Battle of Berlin. The war cemetery of the First Polish Army lies just outside the village of Siekierki. In April 1945, between the village of Siekierki and Gazdowice, the Eastern Front came knocking on Germany's door. The First Polish Army fought here valiantly, pushing their German enemies across the Odra River and eventually all the way to Berlin. Nearly 2,000 Poles are buried here close to where they fell defending their homeland. Many died trying to cross the river while dodging enemy machine gun fire from the western bank of the Odra. Shortly after the end of World War II, the cemetery was organized for the Polish soldiers who died both during the crossing of the Oder and for the Battle of Berlin. Exhumations from temporary graves 
began shortly after the war and lasted until 1948. Initially, there were wooden crosses on the graves and a wooden chapel stood in the middle of the cemetery. Then, in 1950, the wooden crosses were replaced with concrete tombstones. A few years later, the wooden chapel was removed and concrete crosses stylized as the Order of the Cross of Grunwald appeared on the mass graves. On October 15, 1961, in place of the chapel, in the middle of the cemetery, a monument was unveiled. It is 18 meters high and made of granite. It consists of an obelisk on which two Grunwald swords hang. In the background, there are sails symbolizing the crossing of the Odra River, and next to the obelisk, there is a figure of a mother with a child, symbolizing the return of the Odra region to Poland. In 1990, a tall metal cross was erected next to the monument. 1,987 soldiers are buried at the cemetery. Of those, 326 are known but to God. Where's your sweet bun? Sweet buns? That's over there. Okay. I won't talk about food yet. Oh, okay. Talk about food. <clears throat> it's so cold. Very cold. We got done uh, walking around at, at the, the cemetery. cemetery and at the site of um, the fake battle. No, real battle. Maybe wrong place. Wrong, wrong but fake place. Real place, different place. Right. Anywho. So we uh, wanted to look for some food. And if you're ever in this area, come to close to the border crossing and there's always there's always going to be something. So we found there's a huge shopping center here and everything is in German, even though we're still in Poland. Because <laughs> Germany's right there. Yeah, Germany's right over across that board bridge. But if you're hungry, you can always find something here. But since pandemic is still around, everything's closed. But Make it easy. <laughs> Always open. Doesn't matter what's happening. Zombie apocalypse. Make these. Yeah. Will still be going. So we found some. Uh, we got some coffee and Mark got some food and I got a sweet bun, and uh, we'll warm up and we'll be on our way home. So this is. I don't know if we said this in the beginning. This is an hour and a half south, straight south from Stretching. Yep. So we're gonna head home and. But hey, we got to go an hour away from home. Huh? Pretty special. That's pretty special. For us anyway. Yeah. If you want to check out our other videos, go to uh, YouTube channel and browse around. Or go to Poetry Kitchen and cook something with us. Follow, like, and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at Polish Your Kitchen. Uh, follow us on YouTube at Polish Your Kitchen. Go to www.polishyourkitchen.com. Check out the merch store. Hit the like button on this. Subscribe, please. And then hit the bell. And the bell will let you know when we put out new stuff. Now, we have not been very good at that lately. Well, we've been sick. Stop using that as an excuse. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, <laughs> But we're better now. So we're filming today. We're filming tomorrow. We're filming this weekend. We're filming, 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 filming. Now, we need you guys to will some good freaking weather. Because it won't go away. Do that for us, please. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Huh? Bye. 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 See Germans over there. Is it or the German police? No, that's police. Yeah. They didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> the Poles said Germans stay over there and they didn't listen, the Polizei is here. <laughs>